nature hunts when morning comes along. Day is dawning, stop yawning, and begin to join me in my song. Early bird, up at break of day. Early bird, sing the dark away. Early birdies always catch a worm or two. So don't be late, you've got a date, your worm is awaiting you. Sleepy head, never see the sun, stay out bed, always miss the fun, whistle in the morning, then the worm a warning. Sleepy head, tumble out of bed, be a little early bird. in the village. Have Slocum send me a crate of brass polish. Aye, aye, Captain. My mother was beautiful, wasn't she, Cap? Mighty pretty star, according to her pictures. Gee, we were lucky, weren't we? Lucky? Mm-hmm. I never have known what my mother looked like. It wasn't for that trunk. Did you swim with it in your teeth, too? No, no, it just washed ashore. <laughs> Lucia de Lamamor. Do you think they named the song after my mother? I reckon so. She must have been an opera singer from the dress she's got on and the clothes in the trunk. I wonder, could she sing asleep in the deep, always down? <laughs> Pretty deep down in the hatch for a soprani. Many brave hearts are asleep in the deep, so beware. Be How can anybody sleep in the deep anyways? That means the last long sleep, Star. Does everyone have to die? Sometime. You and me, too? When the time comes. Do you think we'll last till Christmas? I shouldn't be surprised if we made it. You better up anchor now and get on your way. Aye, aye. <laughs> Am I seagoing, Cap? Seagoing from Jim to Taffel. Goodbye. So long. On a crack, you break your mother's back. <laughs> one as soon as the halibut start running. I hope they start running soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't rush a halibut. Well, don't give up the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Star. How are you? Hello, Hello, Star. Hello, Star. How are you, Lassie? I'm hearty. Hi, good morning, Star. Good morning, Mrs. Croft. Is the captain with you? No, ma'am. Tell the dear captain I asked after him. Don't forget. I will. <laughs> I mean, I won't. <laughs> Better look out, Star, or she'll tie a tow rope onto January and you'll lose him. Not while I'm in charge of the lighthouse. 
We need another case of brass polish. We need it right away. And don't forget what we get off for being government. Well, you know we always aim to please you, Miss January. The price is still the same and we'll make prompt delivery. Hmm. Have one on the house, Star. Oh, they're all the same size. I measured them. I know. But the black ones last longer. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Now, don't forget about our special price. You know I'm giving you all our trade. Uh, I won't forget. <laughs> There's your music, Star. Let's get going. Come on, Star. Yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't drop it. I won't, Star. Up here. Next Friday night, you're all invited to dance from 8 to 5. All the fishes still alive are having a ball. It's some affair. They'll all be there from the herring to the whale. They'll turn out to shake a scale in Neptune's hall. Come along and follow me to the bottom of the sea. We'll join in the jamboree at the codfish ball. Lobsters dancing in a row, shuffle off to Buffalo. Jellyfish sway to and fro at the codfish ball. But he can, 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 like the sardine can. Two men trucking left and right. Many's mooching, what a night. There won't be a hook in sight at the codfish ball. Come along and follow me to the bottom of the sea. We'll join in the jamboree at the codfish ball. Lobsters dancing in a row. Shuffle off to Buffalo. Jellyfish way to and fro at the cottage ball. Finn and Hattie leave the eel through an Irish eel. The catfish is a dancing man, but he can't. Like the sardine can. Men's trucking left and right. Men is mooching, what a night. There won't be a hook inside at the codfish ball.
Yeah. Well, Star, you can sing about being a sailor and you can dance like one. But you'll never be one till you learn to spit a curve in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> do you have to know how to do that? You sure do. You're just a blooming landlubber till you can. That's uh, right. right. <laughs> then I'm going to learn now. Watch me. Stand back, boys. Let her go, Cap. <laughs> now it's your turn. Yeah, yeah go ahead, Star. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that ain't it. Now watch me closely. <laughs> Get the idea? I got it now. Watch. <laughs> Now you got it. Try it again. <laughs> Who is that child? She's the adopted daughter of Captain January, the lighthouse keeper. Isn't she a pretty little thing? Does she go to school? Well, no. You see, the former truant officer wasn't very strict and... Yes, I know. That's why she's the former truant officer. You school teachers will find me strict enough. <laughs> One, two, three. Little girl, little girl, stop that. Disreputable loafers. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves teaching a child to behave this way. Don't be mad at them. They always have fun with me like this. Do you know that Captain Joe Rocks can spit 15 feet in a 20 mile gale? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. And the skipper, he's the one with the accordion. One teach your free Chinaman with a table knife. <laughs> this is dreadful. You should be taken home and spanked. What kind of man is this Captain January to allow you to run Cap's about... Cap's the finest man in the whole world. See that lighthouse down there? Well, Cap owns it. He saved a million ships in his day. You go right home and tell him I'm coming to have a talk about you. Yes, ma'am. I'll bet she can't spit a curve in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be impudent, young lady. I didn't mean to be. Cap always tells me to be polite to old ladies. <laughs> What's her name? I'll tell you all about her tonight. Who is she, Paul? New truant officer that sent over from Salem. What's a truant officer? Stormy weather for kids. Then I guess I'd better up anchor. <laughs> <laughs> what did the woman say then? She just got mad with me and went away. Oh, forget about it. She can't do anything mean to us, can she? No. Remember, I work for the government. I am the government here. Maybe she's government, too. I heard Captain Jaroff say she was some kind of officer. Well, don't worry. Having trouble, Cap? Can I look now, Cap? Oh, no, 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 not yet. Uh, I'll have her in trim in a minute. Why do I have to work on this? All nice little girls work on samplers. Don't seem like nothing I'll need in a seafaring life. That's why you're wrong, Star. A good sailor's got to be able to steer a needle. Can I look now? Oh, it's Captain Nedro. Hello, honey. It's blind my eyes. Can I even give a birthday party around here without you barging in? Pipe down, you catawampus. I didn't come to see you. Come on on out, honey, and see the present I brung you. <gasps> remember me? Why should the crane remember you? Is it a crane? I thought it was a stork. No, it's a crane. Something you always wanted. Wait, you ain't seen nothing yet, Star. Watch.
Nice work, Ichabod. Look at him. Look at him. If it wasn't for the ribbon, you couldn't tell them apart. <laughs> You're going to invite Captain Melrose to stay for the party, aren't you? Well, I wasn't counting on it, but as long as he's here... Goody, I'll fix a place for him. Whether you was counting on it or not, I'm here and I'm going to stay for a while. Oh, you are, are you? Yes, I are. It's time I do a little inspecting around this here lighthouse. They must be daft in Washington, appointing you an inspector. You don't know the difference between a telescope and a tar barrel. The way you handle them, I guess there ain't any. Come and get us, sailors. Over there, Captain Nasro. This don't dance around when you play a harmonica. And it may not be what you always wanted. But I thought maybe you'd like it a little. Like it, Cap? It's the most tremendous prison I ever got. Thanks, Cap. What is that? What do you think it is? How many guesses do I get? It's a cake. Cap made it himself. Oh, did he? Then I guess I'll just eat the candles. Go on, Star. Make a wish and catch her amidships with a spanking breeze. You can have my wish. I can? Then I wish... If you wish what I think you're going to wish, I'll push your face in. Why, you... I'm taking my wish back. I only gave it away because last year I couldn't blow out all the candles anyway. All right, matey. Blow. <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna call the doll? Mother. But if it was only an ordinary doll, I'd call it Susie. Why Susie? After the captain's mermaid. What? Has he got a mermaid? Show him, Cap, show him. No, go on, eat your ice cream. Please show him. Please. No, oh, all right. Make Susie dance. Faster, faster. <laughs> huh. Just a minute. That ain't nothing. Take a look at this. Can you make him dance? Dance? <laughs> Pipe down. You think that's anything? <laughs> Stay out until you get something. <laughs> well, how that? <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> what else you got? Wait a minute. I'll show you something. Which one of you is Captain January? I'm Captain January. I'm Mrs. Morgan, the new truant officer here. Why isn't this child in school? Well, I was aiming to send her next year. What you were aiming to do is of no importance. There's a compulsory education law in this state. And this child is old enough. How does she know how old I am when we don't even know ourselves? From what I have observed, this child has been brought up entirely without control. She's rude, disrespectful, being raised like an ignorant little heathen. Look at the kind of clothes she wears, not even a dress. Say, what business is that of yours? Star's mine, and I ain't listening You'll to You'll listen no... to me, Captain January. You forget this child is adopted, and it's well within the power of the school authorities to have her taken from you and sent to an institution if you fail to raise her properly. Just a minute, Mrs. Morgan. Now, I don't hold none with this mildewed old pirate. But you're talking through your crow's nest when you say Star's being brought up ignorant. Why, she can read writing and write down reading better than any six-year-old on this coast. What do you mean, any six-year-old? Well, there ain't no eight- or nine-year-old from here to Newfoundland that knows as much as Star. No, nor any 10- or 11-year-old, as far as that goes. Or a 13 or a 14. You talk about neglect. Why, well, I've been learning her from the two best books there is, the Bible and Bowditch. Bowditch, a book on navigation. Fine reading for a child of six. Any objections to the Bible? 
There ain't better reading in the world than the Bible and Bowditch. They both learn you to steer a straight course. I didn't come here to discuss reading matter. Is she talking about taking me away from you? Yes, but just talking. Have her report to the schoolhouse for an examination next Tuesday. My nephew is also taking his examination, and we'll determine then and there whether or not she's been neglected. There seems to be some doubt as to the child's age. But you say she has the intelligence of a child of eight. Very well, we'll call her eight. Maybe I'm only six. I'll stand on eight. Now you get out of here. This is her birthday, an examination or no examination. I've had enough of you. We'll see about that. What was that thing she was talking about? An uh, insty, insty. Never mind, honey. You'll never be in one. Now you run outside and play. I want to talk to Nazro. I'll visit with Icky by the crane. All right, matey. You certainly are a lover, putting your foot in it that way. What's the idea insisting Star's as smart as a girl of eight? Well, she is, ain't she? Sure, but why make it tough on yourself? Would have been enough for her to pass the six-year-old examination. But you have to insist on eight. I ain't afraid. After all, Star doesn't belong to you, you know. Doesn't belong to me. That's what I said. You just took her without saying anything to anybody or asking anybody anything. You got no legal right to her. You never even adopted her. She's more than adopted. She's part of me. That's all right. But it ain't the law. When you fished her out of the water, you should have turned her over to the authorities or tried to find out if she had any folks. I did try. Yes, you did. Well, I tried for a little while. Couldn't keep on trying forever. Uh -huh. I didn't want to lose her. I wanted to keep her. Anyway, she has no folks. They're all dead. Are they? Did you ever look through this album carefully? Mrs. John Mason, 326 Boylston Street, Boston, Massachusetts. They may be relatives, you know. Just because they didn't answer your letter doesn't mean they're dead. They may have been away. Or you might have forgot to mail the letter. What business is that of yours? Star's mine, and there ain't nobody going to take her from me. How does this look? Looks like a flag at half mass. Well, I can't quite make up my mind. That's just the thing for school. When I was a little girl, I had one just like it. <laughs> Are you sure you haven't got one with polka dots? Mm, let me see. Polka dots. Polka dots. 450. How about this one? There ain't no dots on that. It's your astigmatism. Oh, I like this one. Say, that certainly is a beauty. Oh, I don't think so much of it. Why don't you try it on, Star? Can I try it on? Why, certainly. Come, I'll help you. Nazro, could you let me have $50 till payday? What do you do with all your money? I'm putting it in a trust fund for Star. You just caught me a little short of ready cash, January. But I know where you can get the 50. Where? The Witter Croft will let you have it. The Witter let you have anything. Nah. Uh, she might start figuring something I don't want her to figure. Oh, I'll belay that. No matter what you do, a woman's gonna figure what she wants to figure. Isn't this pretty? How do I look? Beautiful. I think so, too. Don't you, Cap? Well, I, uh... It fits her perfectly. The whole outfit only amounts to $41.75. That settles it. You wait here, Star. You're going to see the winner. Come on, come on. Oh, wait a minute. Don't rush me. Go on, on in. What you scared of? She won't bite you. How do you know she won't? I'd rather face a 90-mile hurricane in a leaky rowboat. Say... Why do widows always want to get married again, anyway? Are you going in and ask her for that $50, or ain't you? I'll tell you. Why don't we both go in and borrow $25 apiece, huh? All right. I'll do it for Star's sake. Come on. Just a minute. Hello, Nazareth. 
last row. Oh, why, Captain January, come in, come in. Oh, Captain, you should have let me know you were coming. Well, I look a mess. Well, I, uh, uh, Mrs. Croft, Captain January here has something very personal to say to you. So I'll just shove off and leave you two alone. Dirty double-crossing barnacle brain scurvy, Judas. Oh. <laughs> What did you come to ask me, Jen? Well, uh, it ain't so much for me as for Star. You, you see... Oh, I understand. The poor little dear needs a mother's care. There's nothing can take the place of a mother, except another mother. Yes, yes, of course. No, 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 I, I mean, no. It ain't so easy for me to ask you. Oh, my Jen. Great big seafaring man like you, <laughs> scared of little old me. If you'll only grant me this one little favor, I promise. Yes, yes, you promise. Lend me fifty dollars. I've got to get Star a whole new outfit so she'll look nice at her school examination. Why, certainly, Captain. There's nothing you could ask I could refuse you. I'll make out a check for you right now. There you are. Well, thank you, thank you. You know, I've quite an account in the bank. More than enough for one person. Yes, uh, well... Goodbye, Eliza. Goodbye, Jen, dear. Goodbye. Don't you talk to me, you lying crawfish and river rat. Did you get it, Jan, dear? That ain't none of your business. Yes. I was, you were, he was. We were, you were, they were. I was, you were. That don't sound right. Hmm. Gosh, I wish I had gone to school instead of running away to sea. I'm just polishing up a bit. But you already polished up this morning. Can't you stop now, Cap, and help me some more for the examination? Pretty soon, honey. But ships and lives depend upon this light being just so. Suppose that light had been out of order the night you came. Where would you be now? I sleep in the deep. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Remember the tables I learned you, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, tell me the two tables. Two times one is two. Two times two is four. Two times three is six. Two times four is eight. That's right, go on. Two times five is ten. Huh? Remember any of the three table? Sure. Three times one is three. Three times two is six. Three times three is nine. Three times four is twelve. Three times five is four. Now we'll do some more geography. All right. Captain Nazro said. Nazro, Nazro, always Nazro. Did I hear my name mentioned? What do you want? Nothing with you, you desiccated old crawfish. But I thought I'd come and help get Star ready for the examination. You being so illiterate. Me illiterate? Well, I can spell you down, read you down, write you down, and figure you down. And I can do it all with my hands tied behind my back. No, you couldn't. You'd need your fingers to count with. Yeah, well, I bet you couldn't count over ten without taking your shoes off. <laughs> Quarling ain't helping Star none with her examination. But this might. You see, I thought it might help things along if we knew the questions they was going to ask. Gee, this is great. Where'd you get them? Paul borrowed the key to the schoolhouse and the school teacher, and him and me paid it a little visit. Well, listen, Star. These are the questions they're going to ask you tomorrow. Now, here's the first one. 
What would be the area of a field 87 rods long and 206 and a half yards wide? And what would it cost at 22 and a half cents a square foot? What's the answer? How much is a rod? How many fathoms? I thought you wouldn't know. I'll figure this out for you later. Well, let's see what the next question is. Name six animals that live in very cold countries. I know. Three bears and three seals. <laughs> no, Star. They mean six different kind of animals. That would be bears and seals and walruses and foxes and polar bears. But and... you've already used bears. Well, polar bears are different kind of bears, ain't they? Gonna act like that, you might just as well say she bears, he bears, and baby bears. Now, what other kind of animal did I see when we were on that Arctic expedition? Oh, I remember. A skunk. Don't look at me, you sea cow. That's the wrong answer, Star. What's the next question? Can you prove that heat expands? What does expand mean? Gets bigger. Can you prove that heat makes things bigger? Of course it makes things bigger. The days are longer in the summer, aren't they? I guess that's the answer, all right. Write down the quality of mercy speech from the merchant of Venice. Ah! It's a put-up job with that old hatchet face. No child of eight or eighty can answer that riddle. It's a mistake. I must have picked up the wrong paper. This is a high school examination. I just saw the word examination and thought it was all right. Bah! You can't even steal proper. Come on, Star, let's get on with our lessons. More arithmetic? No, I guess we finished with arithmetic. Does she know about fractions? Sure she does. How many halves in a hole, Star? How big a hole, Captain Nazarro? Every hole would have the same number of halves, wouldn't it? But wouldn't a bigger hole have bigger halves than a little hole? Sounds reasonable. Uh, how much does four quarters make? Never mind that. They're not going to ask Star anything about fractions. Now, let's go on with our geography again. Tell me what I learned you yesterday. This is the Atlantic Ocean. This is the Pacific Ocean. This is the equator. This is the North Pole. Uh, not so fast. Not so fast. The world goes faster than that, doesn't it? I might. Now, what's this I'm pointing to? China. Mm -hmm. What comes from China? Tea. And what else? Chinaman. You're going at this all wrong, January. Nobody's going to ask a little girl like Star anything about China. How do you know? You never passed an eight-year-old test, did you? I could have passed one. Maybe when you was full grown. You know, with me telling that Morgan woman I was teaching Star from the Bible, they're pretty apt to ask you some questions about the Bible. Well. There ain't many children as up in the book as she is. I know, but what are the four Gospels? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Correct. Now, remember the story I read you last week about the prodigal son? Mm-hmm. And the father said, bring out the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. That's fine. But everyone wasn't merry, Star. There was a brother and some neighbors. Now, who was sorry that the prodigal son came back? Listen, Mary, you can give Star a break if you want to. It's impossible, Paul. The examination must be conducted honestly. You know I love Star as much as you do, Gee, but... if I was in your place, I'd lean over backwards to see that kid pass. I'd like to, but I can't lean either way. The test has got to be perfectly fair. Remember when I was in school once, I missed every question on examination, but they promoted me anyhow. I guess they needed your desk. No, that wasn't it, but I did see the teacher kissing the principal. Even if Star saw me kissing the principal, I couldn't favor her. Anyhow, Mrs. Morgan is no woman to trifle with. She'll be watching me like a hawk. I know, honey, I know, but... Gee, I wish you'd give Star a break. I wish you'd give me a break, Paul. Well, Mary... I'll see you tomorrow, Mary.
Here. Thanks, Cap. That's for the teacher. Why? I think it's a good idea. Excellent. Well, lots of luck, honey. Aren't you coming too? No, but we'll be around. Now oh, listen, dear. You've just got to pass this examination. You've just got to. It may mean that they'll try to take you away from me if you don't. Now, now I don't want to make you nervous or anything. No, he don't want to make you nervous. You old fool. I'll do my best, Cap. Now, take it easy and don't worry. I'm not worried. There ain't nothing to worry about. No, of course not. I wish she was stronger on fractions. Oh, you and your fractions. Come on, maybe we can see in the side window. You clumsy old son of a sea slug. Why can't I go in now? Because the teacher's putting the examples on the board. What's an example? Ah, oh, you don't know nothing. I'll bet you don't even know who discovered America. What's the sailor? I don't know. Guess so. Cap did. He didn't do no such thing. Christopher Columbus discovered America. And I know when he discovered it, too. It was in 1492. You don't know nothing. Are you awful smart? Sure. That's why I'm taking the examination today. My aunt wants me to jump from the first grade to the third grade. I can jump from the first step to the third step in the lighthouse. No, it ain't that kind of jumping. Come, children. What's she doing? Nothing. They ain't started yet. Quit shaking this barrel. We're ready to start now, Mrs. Morgan. That's fine. The sooner the better for me. I'm sure my nephew is ready. Uh, Sarah, you sit there. And Star, you sit beside him. What's this for? No talking, please. She's a problem. Shing, 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 shing. We'll begin with arithmetic, children. What did I tell you? Fractions. Let me up there. Here are eight fishing schooners. Those aren't schooners, they're catches. <laughs> You're quite right, Star, but let's go on. Here are eight boats. These five sailed away. Now, Star, how many boats were left? Why were they left? Did they foul their anchors or something? Is she having trouble? Yes, and it's your fault. Who are you waving at? Children raise their hand, Star, when they know the answer. What is the answer, Cyril? Three. That's correct, Cyril. Of course there were three. Maybe she's nervous. But maybe she'll get going good. Bah, I guess Mrs. Morgan was right. You ain't fit to look after a child. Who ain't? You ain't. You ain't fit for nothing. Star ought to be took away from you. Why, you lopsided old swab. When George's Listen. father found his favorite Give me your hand. Maybe there's room for both of them. So the father said, who chopped down the cherry tree? George replied, father, I cannot tell a lie. I did it with my little hat. Hat. Hatchet. 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 <laughs> You've both read very well. Now, I want you to make up a story about being left alone to take care of a little brother. You first, Cyril. But I haven't got a little brother. I know, but make believe that you have one, and your mother has left you to take care of him. What happened? 
I stayed home with my little brother. We played games. We had a good time. Yes? That's all. What can you make up, Star? One night, Cap went away and left me alone in the lighthouse with my little brother. My little brother's name is Jimmy. All of a sudden, the biggest wave in the world came along. Jimmy was scared, but I wasn't. Maybe I was a little scared, but I held Jimmy's hand. We said our prayers the way Cap taught us. Well, the lighthouse, with me and Jimmy in it, floated all the way over to China. China? Yeah, they'll probably set her down for lying so hard. There were a lot of little Chinese boys and girls there. We played games with them. One of the little girls gave me a nice kimono and Jimmy some pretty toys. We were very happy till a lot of pirates came off the ship and stole me and Jimmy. Pretty soon, a big storm came up. So Jimmy and I locked the pirates in the hold. <laughs> then we sailed the boat to darkest Africa. After that, we were wrecked off the coast of Finland. But we were picked up by a tramp steamer on the way to Singapore. There was a boatswain on the boat who scuttled the ship. That will be enough, Star. But a whole lot more happened. I know, but you've told us enough. But history is hardly a third grade subject. I suppose you taught her all you know about history. She don't know a thing about history. That's what I mean. Very well. Cyril, who discovered America? Christopher Columbus. That's correct. When did he discover America? In, uh... Yes, Star? In 1492. Very good, Star. I can do other things. I can sing, and I can dance, and I can read a ship's compass, and I can... Well, not now. Come here, Cyril. Go back to your desks and write the answers to these problems. This will finish the examination. I don't understand, Cyril. Well, what about my nephew? Cyril is a very bright child, Mrs. Morgan, but I don't think it would be advisable for him to skip a grade at this time. Did I pass the examination? Yes, you did, Star. You may enter the third grade. <laughs> she passed! She passed! She passed! What happened? You, you passed, honey, you passed! This is the most flagrant piece of favoritism I've ever seen. I'm sorry, Mrs. Morgan. I tried to be fair. <laughs> Going to put Star in an institution, huh? You better put that dumbbell nephew of yours in one. <laughs> Come here. If they think they're through with me, they're very much mistaken. Many brave hearts are asleep in the deep, so beware. People stick together, but you forget I have my authority from the state board, and I'll take steps. Ah! Oh, 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 I ain't talking about cider. I'm talking about my educating the star so good she jumps right into the third grade. <laughs> you educating her? Why, you couldn't get into the third grade yourself. It was the things I learned her that put her through. Quit your bragging, gooseneck, and let's drink the star. You don't think I'd drink to you, you blubber-headed blowfish. To star! To star! Do you think I look as good in this dress as my mother did? I expect so. It's been quite a job of work cutting it down. Now, wouldn't you like for me to live here so I could cut them all down to fit you? 
No, I'd rather grow up to fit the dresses. Oh, you mean you wouldn't like me to live here? Well, I like you, but you see, I'm the lady of the house, and we couldn't have two ladies of the house. Oh. Well, now you tell Captain January that I fixed this for you. I'll remember. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> something out of a picture book. Did you fix that dress over? Mrs. Cox helped me a little bit. <laughs> I've been looking all over for you, Captain. I thought maybe this telegram might be something important. Thanks, bud. Bad news? No, just department routine. Oh, is that all? I thought maybe they was getting wise down in Washington and throwing you out of your job. No, not exactly. <laughs> what would you like me to play, Captain Nazro? Oh, uh, nothing, Star. Not now. I got some work to do. Good night, dear. Good night, you old albatross. Good night, Captain Nazro.
I got seven. Fifteen, two, fifteen, four, and each a dozen. <laughs> well, I've been beating you steady now for ten years, and it looks like I'll beat you for the next ten. <laughs> Even, boy. Slocum told me to drop this here on the way home. Put it on the table over there. I can't figure out what you're laying all these supplies in for. You won't need this much for just a week. Automatic. Automatic. Pretty soon they'll have a machine to do your eating for you. And your chewing, too. Go ahead, January. It's your deal. What you gabbing about? What's all this automatic stuff? Why, that new light they're putting in here. I couldn't get up the nerve to... When does it happen? The 30th. I'll see what you done. You made me swat him a cud. I'll make you swallow your cud, you lame brain. Oh. Cap. Oh, Cap. What's the matter, Cap? Something wrong? No. No, nothing at all, honey. Mm. Nothing at all. I don't think I could fall asleep unless you read to me. In you go.
I can't understand why I don't get no answer to that letter. In two days, January will be out of a job, and that's what old Hatchet Face has been waiting for. No, of course it is. It's a shame January can't get another job. He's one of the best navigators on the whole coast. Jobs ain't to be had for the asking nowadays. Maybe when the halibut start running. Or walking or something. Perhaps your letter was lost. Why don't you send a telegram? That's an idea. Do you think I'm doing right in sending for these people? Of course you are. You never did anything righter in your life. I hate to think what January's going to say when he finds out. I know, but if someone doesn't come to take Star, Mrs. Morgan's going to have her way. The minute she can prove he has no job and no means of support, she'll get a court order like that. But I don't know nothing about these Mason people except what I read in the album. Maybe they ain't even related to Star. Whoever they are. They're better for Star than an institution. Certainly better than any institution Mrs. Morgan would pick out. That's right. And Boston Street's a very Tony neighborhood in Boston. Will you phone the telegram to Salem for me? Here's the address. We'll take care of it right away. Come on, Paul. I wish there weren't any jobs in the whole world. Why, Star? You worry about jobs, and Cap worries about them. He feels even worse than you. He sits in his chair all day, just looking and looking. Hello, Star. Hello, Paul. Hello, Captain. Having a good time? Not really and truly. I'm just pretending to. Cap's feeling awful bad about having to leave the lighthouse. Cheer him up. He looks worried, too. He was born worried. What do you want? Oh, come out of it. The way you're acting, you'd think I was responsible for putting in those newfangled lights. No, it ain't that. I'm just plumb worried. I can't seem to connect with another job. With all that ruction the Morgan woman's stirring up about Star. I think everything's going to be all right with Star. I've sent for those people. People? What people? Those people in that album, the Masons. I've asked them to come. You did that? You? You and me have a lot of quarrels, but I always thought deep down you were my friend. I am your friend. My friend? You happened to take Star away from me, and you call yourself my friend. Why, well, you dirty double-crossing, I'll bring you. I'll... Well, for the I'll... best, January, don't you understand? I understand. I understand I've been sold out by a man I trusted. You haven't been sold out, January. I have been. You're a rotten crimp, helping to the steel Star. I suppose you've been figuring this out for a long time. Now, now, January, you being without a job... I remember you telling me at the schoolhouse that Mrs. Morgan was right, that I wasn't fit to take care of Star. I didn't think you meant it then. Oh, January. But now I know you did mean it. You've been plotting with them to take Star away from me. If you ever come near me again, I'll break your lying carcass in two. I'll... Did you cheer him up? Better check up on that spritz box. All this stuff around here should have been junked years ago. I guess you don't know how many ships Cap saved with this light. What, that old Chinese lantern? You could do better with a candle and a box of matches. Come on, come on, boys. It's getting late. Yes, Star. It is getting late. We better be going. You get that way, sticking around alone in these lighthouses. Where are we going, Cap? This is Cross. She's nice. You know, Star, I'm kind of glad we're going. I ain't so young anymore, and this climbing up and down has been getting to my leg. Mine, too. And that's why I'm glad we're going to live with Mrs. Cross instead of here. Hey? 
It's near the school, and I won't have to walk so far. Oh, yeah. Yep, I'm relieved to be getting out of here. So am I. I'm tired of looking out here and seeing nothing but the sea. Nothing but the sea. Quick, it's happened. I told you nothing. But she's got the paper. She's got the order. Order? What order? Order to produce star in court. Come on, you gotta beat it. Mrs. Morgan's on her way here now with a deputy from Salem. You don't want him to take Star away, do you? I'm not running away. I'm not afraid to appear in court. Listen, if they get a hold of Star, you'll lose her as sure as you're standing there. What are they going to do to me? Nothing. Don't be stubborn. You can fight later. In the meantime, take Star and hide out. Where? I got my boat in the cove. Paul's aboard waiting for you. Run her out a mile or so and stay there. Come on. Come on, Star. <laughs> Send the rest of the things over to Slocum. I'll come out and bring you some food in a little while. All right. Take her, January. Uh, what? Shove off, Paul. Everything's going to work out all right. You won't let them take me away from you, will you? Don't you fret none. I won't let them touch you. Now, you better lie down for a bit. as pretty as your light. Now don't you worry, honey. You just close your little eyes and rest. I brought you the things from Slocum's. Hey, give me a hand. Hello, Star. Hello. Oh, honey, you'd better go back. I'm sorry, Cap. They must have followed me. Get your mooring lines ready. Aye, aye. Take this line on board. Aye, aye. Get out your stern line. Aye, aye. I'm from the sheriff's office. I have an order to produce that child before Judge Thompson at Salem. All right. When do you want us? Tomorrow afternoon at 3. We'll be there. You take that child right now. Don't you understand that he's trying to sneak her out of the jurisdiction of the court? He ain't doing nothing of the sort. No? What's he doing on this boat, then? Officer, just a minute, please. You're responsible for the custody of the child. If he gets beyond the 12 miles, though... Maybe you're right. I can't take any chances. All right, come on, Bob. You let me in, though. You let me in, though. I won't. And I'll quit it. I won't. Cut that you out. let me in, though. I'll quit that. Cut that out, I tell you. Don't you keep your hands over. Oh! You can't get away from me. Put them all. Oh, you you won't let me in. Now, take her. Hey, stop that. Oh, please, Cap. Don't let them take me away. Why are you waiting? Yes. Take her! Come on, bud. Come on, bud, let's go. Yes. Take her, Captain. Are you hurt? I'll be all right. Go with Star. Don't let her out of your sight. Go ahead. I'll take care of him. You let me go. Pass off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to leave. I don't want to. That's all right, honey. Don't cry. You let me alone. I want to stay with Cap. Oh, I'll be with you soon. Be a good girl, honey. Why are they taking me away from you? What have I done? Cap! Oh, Cap!
Now take it easy, Star. You see, you're just being shanghaied by a lot of pirates. But we'll get you away. Well, you'll be back with January before you know it. Captain Nazaro! They've come! They've come! They're up at the house looking for you. The Masons! Star's Anne! So, that's who she is. Star's Anne. Yes, they got your telegram and came right away. Oh, how dare you interfere! This is some kind of a trick. It's not a trick. Those folks are Star's relatives. Well, they can tell it to the judge. But according to the paper I've got here, the child has no relatives. They've just been found. How providential. Listen here. You've got the authority to take Star away from January. I ain't denying that. But have you got the authority to take her away from her relatives? No. But how do I know they are her relatives? That's easy. Suppose you drop in at my quarters and have a talk with them. It's certainly strange that after four years, relatives suddenly appear. It isn't strange at all. I've had a long talk with them. Mr. Mason is American consul in Morocco, and they've just come back from abroad. They're fine people, and they've got all the proof and identification they need. Well, I don't know. I suppose you know that under Section 3, Paragraph 2 of the Penal Code, you can get into a lot of trouble taking a child away from its kin. I guess there can't be any harm in talking to those folks. Let's go see them. On my left, honey. I don't need that. I've got to go after Star. Now, Cap, you take it easy. You might be hurt worse than you think you are. I don't care. I've got to go after Star. Not now. Nothing can happen to her tonight. Remember, Nazaro is with her. I know, but she needs me. You'll feel better tomorrow. First thing in the morning, we'll run the boat in. All right. But the first thing in the morning. I'm perfectly satisfied, but maybe the judge would like... We'll appear before him any time he wishes. Here's my card. Well, goodbye. Glad to have been of service. Do you like the doll, Star? That's a lovely name, Star. I think I'll call you that. Your real name is Helen. She says Mama if you squeeze her. I know, but I like this one better. She's a wonderful doll. <laughs> We're going to try to make you very happy, Star. I'd rather be with Cap. Besides, he needs me. I always take care of him. Why, he'd be lost without me. I know. He must be a very, very fine man. Are you sure we shouldn't see Captain January before we leave? Not now, ma'am. I don't think it would be a good idea. You see, he feels Star is his. And it might cause a lot of trouble. Please! <laughs> what do you think we'd better do? The child feels so badly. Oh, she'll cry and feel bad for a few days, but after that she'll be all right. You know children, they forget quick. Yes, but it's going to be hard on Captain January. No doubt of that. But he'll see the right of it when I tell him the kind of folks you are. Better get it over. I got her away from that old reprobate anyway. And as for you, young lady, you can rest assured you'll be dismissed for your part in this. Oh, oh I beg your pardon. Come on, Mary. Love you better than all the other things put together. Be 
because you looked like my mother. And the captain made you with his own hands. What makes life the sweetest, bestest, and completest? Not a big dull house or a Mickey Mouse, but the right somebody to love. Ice cream, cake, and candy may be fine and dandy, but if you ask me, they're not one, two, three, with the right somebody to love. One you really care for and is yours to have and keep. One you say a prayer for and you're now why lay me down to sleep. Though you're not quite seven, what is most like heaven is the joy that's found with your arms around just the right somebody to love. I guess you'd better get Star ready. They're coming for her. Thank you, dear. Come on, Star. Well, Star, are you ready for a nice surprise? How would you like to take a lovely trip? Very much, Aunt Mary. Go on, dear. I think we found a toy you'll really like. And besides, we're fixing up a playroom for you. Thanks, Uncle John. Would you like to go up on the bridge? Yes, please. Cap used to tell me about bridges. Oh, Captain! I'm first mate. <laughs> Hello, Star. I'm the crew. <laughs> now that you got a job, Paul, you can get married. Yep, and I don't have to wait for the halibut to start running. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Captain, I've got a surprise for you. Look. Jeff, dear. I'm the cook. <laughs> Come along and follow me to the bottom of the sea. We'll join in the jamboree at the party. 